Welcome back, everyone, to the Heroes Hearth in-house league. My name is Bahamut. I am joined by McIntyre. How are you, and are you ready for some Heroes of Storm action? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's Monday. The, uh, you know, today is usually not the best day of the week, right? This is the the beginning of the the work week for most. But uh, the the palm was hitting pretty hard. But, you know, I got Heroes of the Storm, right? A little, little in-house league here. Monday nights. Uh, excited for it. Looking forward to it. Yeah, right now we um, we would join right into the game as we typically do in the in-house league, but the players are unsure of who gets the hat. Um, so <laughs> I'm just going to go, I, like, at this point, we just kind of have to hat Tiger JK and go, right? That's how we do. Tiger I don't, like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but either way, we are, we are going to be doing the in-house league and uh, looks like that's just the right team saying that they're ready. Uh, this is going to be a best of five series showcasing some wonderful games between a lot of these players, and they are not playing for free. They're going to be playing for a little bit of money on the line. They are going to be going ahead and playing for, I believe, a 75-25 split. Yep, that's it. 15, mm -hmm. 15 bucks for each player. At least uh, a standardized Taco Bell meal of sorts easy easy, <clears throat> easy. i know that's what i got over the weekend yeah the 15 dollars <laughs> at Ty, uh, the old taco bell is pretty substantial uh i feel like we've we've discussed this a few times but yeah it's yeah, a, but it's, 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 it's just so good though <laughs> good, either way <laughs> that's a good amount of food as i I'm, I'm gonna try to we are moving into the game here looks like abs might be having a hiccup hopefully it shows up here it's it's just you know it's it's having one of those moments oh wait mm. We're, we black, get one of those. we're black screened. It'll, it'll, yeah, it'll slowly I'm gonna figure come it out. through. Once, once the game is like running long enough, it's just like it'll finally be like, all right, cool. I decided that I actually want to show my face. All right. Yeah. Uh, either way, we are going to get into Hanamura Temple Draft. So while while they're while McIntyre is working on that, I'll go ahead and just yeah. kind of give you uh, kind of a play by play as to what's happening in the draft. But we are here on Hanamura Temple. Lane push is really powerful. It's a two lane map. You're gonna want to have things to clear waves. You're gonna nice. have things to clear camps, and you are gonna be. Ooh, we got a game. Yep. Ooh, wait. Yeah, yeah, there yeah, we yeah. go. Everything Just gonna came reorder everything, though. and you should and be bouncing back here too. There it is. <laughs> the moment that you do that, Rob Christie comes through with the 17 months. Thank you so much for the support, my friend. But now you can all see you haven't lost or missed anything. We are going to be here in game number one on Hanamura Temple, and this will be an Ana ban on the right hand side. We are going to be having uh, Ralph's Raiders on the left, and we will be having Bandits Bruisers on the right. Yeah, these two teams tonight. I mean, like we said, talk, fighting fighting it out for some uh, Taco Bell money. We actually do have uh, something exciting, too, coming next week that has been announced. While it won't, won't be on Monday, mm -hmm. it will be on Wednesday night. What, what, what is that, Baja? There's this thing. It's like it's the um, Casual Cheese League, I believe it is. Okay. And it's... Um, no, no, that's that's the new thing we're working on. So the Celebrity Clash League is going to be happening on Wednesday, and that's going to be starting at 6 o'clock. PDT, 9 o'clock if you're on the East Coast, and that is going to be two best of threes on this channel, so don't miss out on that. Um, some really, really good games, and yeah, that's all we can say at this point. That's literally all we can say, but the Casual Cheese League. I know Workhorse is already excited about that. Um, <laughs> he loves cheese. Uh, Li Ming, <laughs> Li Ming's going to be banned here, as you were joking earlier when we were talking. Um, the Li Ming burst in the compositions as of late have just been diabolical, and yeah. that's not something a lot of teams want to deal with. And same thing with Urel, because, well, Dauntless with 50 armor, it's... Mac not fun. Mac, I want, Mac, I want to talk about this really quick. Last night, I was casting a game, and someone didn't take Dauntless, and I spent a solid Oof. minute and a half just going, why? <laughs> like... I'm upset about it. I don't feel it. like there's an argument for any other uh, talent at level one, really? Yeah, it's... I mean, there was a day where you would take the heal talent on her, right? Um, like, back in my day, right? But the this was before they made the Dauntless change where it, re mm -hmm. it reduced the damage you take from structures. So, like, yeah. now with the structures um, being as strong as they are, it's like, why wouldn't you want this talent, right? It's so insane. It allows you to dive... And she's one of those characters, too, where you dive and you pop your heroic, start absorbing all that damage and healing back up. So it's like the design of the character in general uh, it just feels like that's the place to be. And you can heal off of Q anyways, right? Like, mm -hmm. you, you don't need the passive. So yeah, they, I like they, that they adjustment that the players have made to, to the character and, and, and her play style. 
They definitely, I think they took the, the healing off of the basic ability at level one. Um, and it was, and I was like sitting there like rolling through the numbers in my head and I was like, it's just, it's just not viable enough in my head. I mean, 50 armor is 50 armor and yeah. that's just, it's just busted strong. But Sylvanas, ETC, Rainer on the right hand side, Greymane and Rhaegar on the left. Um, and on, you know, on the note of things that have been kind of popping up and meta wise, Rhaegar is actually a really good thing to discuss right here because we do have bloodlust as kind of the, yeah. the main state for a lot of these players as of late like i actually casted two games that were bloodlust games last night and they were really really good i've been seeing it everywhere um materials made a slight resurgence did they say that they're still very niche did yeah. they buff anything with bloodlust like the i know that the that got... heroic got buffed but like did the actual ability get buffed no 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 i think it was just so the 20 weird. got upgraded yeah i think that was really about it that's like, it though right like it's the it, it's yeah. bloodlust still right it's, it's, in blood it's interesting to see bloodlust is taken like so so frequently wonder, now with a character i wonder if it's also maybe the tower meta that changed everything up a little bit too you're, you're finding yourself more in a five stack more often or more you know five v fives yeah. a little more when you're pushing in so maybe that's the value from it or it's just one of those things like here's the storm we have this weird cycle of metas where like something is just non-meta non-valuable not played and then all of a sudden on the next week randomly it's just it just soars through the through storm league and yeah. every streamer's playing it so it just becomes the meta like i'd say definitely back in the day of like pro play like if in korea at least like if the people who watch korea they'd be like oh sergeant hammer's being played like i'm gonna go play a sergeant hammer in my storm league like you'd never see like in north america <laughs> there'd be like it'd be the same thing though like in north america if like if someone picks up like uh, let's say like Artanis on Battlefield of Eternity. Like people would just be like, "Whoa, whoa, is this like super meta or something like that?" So then, yeah, yeah. and then and then everyone starts playing it, and it just because. And I think like it's just like it's part of that just like meta of Heroes of the Storm, where like after a while, like someone's just like, "I'm gonna make Bloodlust meta," and then it just <laughs> falls into that. Like yeah, but either way, our draft is gonna be coming through here. Um, Samuro will be picked up on the left with a Jaina, and then to round things out on the right, it was an Artanis and a Decker Kane. I want to say Decker Kane Ruby busted. Yeah, I, was, I guess I sh we should mention like you know the, the, there was a patch last week and mm -hmm. and we were actually getting to see two characters that saw some change from that patch. One I know with Liam, especially since I was playing with him on that day of the patch, um, mm -hmm. continued to harp on Artanis's block change on his level one, and I think that we are going to see that right now um, come into play against the Samro. Uh, so this is our this is something that is not normal. I would say like Artanis is not something that I would typically see in an everyday situation, but with the change to his block, I'm not, we'll hopefully get to see what the talent actually reads. I know that there was something that basically made it more powerful. Uh, so mm -hmm. it looks like he's using that as a counter to the Samura pick um, from Valimar. That's going to be really excited. I do want to point out actually Darkshear in chat uh, has a correction for us. The lifesteal amount was increased by 30 to 40% and it lasts from 16, it went from 16 it lasts 16 seconds at at 20 at 20 so it was increased by four seconds so okay. um so there was a slight there was a there was a that 10 percent increase so the, mm -hmm. the life steal was increased a little bit right there but either way we are going to be here on uh, game number one on hanamura ralph's raiders on the left hand side and we are going to be having tiger jk on the jaina carbon will be on the gray main heavy hooten on the Rhaegar, tremor on the joanna and we have samuro on excuse me being played by samuro is playing valmar and mm -hmm. For Bandits Bruisers, that's going to be Vesper Teen playing that Artanis. Sylvanas, I believe, is going to be piloted by Maze, Mason Blaze. Uh, Chijuggy on the ETC. Legacy rocking that Decker Kane. Really strong pick here. And Centurion on the Rainer on the coin. Here, here's that the four-man top. They're going to do a little cheese Ooh. strat, possibly with the Sylvanas. Trying to get that early value. Maybe a tower. Potentially two. But she's turning hey, the towers off. Here it goes. Yeah. Yeah, you already see the rotation coming up, and they're waning. They're well, they're not waning, but they're considering. Well, do we go? Do we stay up there? Do we go down? It looks like they're actually going to end up backing off this top. They don't see as much as expected. Maybe they were thinking the rotation was coming out. I, I don't know. Either way, Vesper in this bottom lane is now going to be having their butt. Are we just going to just race these? Yeah, I think we are. Like, hello. Everyone just says, "Let's go next." They're just going to base race until the game's over. I mean, they are doing the correct thing here, actually, if we if we think about it. But, ooh, the nice swap here from Liam. Is it going to be enough, though? Trimmer able to walk out of there. Joanna's so much health and that physical resistance as well. Uh, helping her with the towers. It's interesting to think, uh, you know, these, these teams are actually not doing anything wrong, I would say. The map is based around the boss lanes, and mm -hmm. both team is 
uh, kind of utilizing that, right? Uh, they, they're both running down the lane of their boss. They want to keep that lane as pushed up as possible. And I, I'm going to be honest. I, okay, there is some resistance here. I, okay. I was going to expect just a full-on base race. I was like, I was like half expecting like back in like what was it, like HGC. Um, what was it? It was the Australian where there was like two teams that like it was basically the game was already decided like it didn't matter if, if one of the teams won or lost like so they ended up just doing a gentleman's agreement on Brax's holdout and one team took top one team took bottom and they just raced to the cores <laughs> and like the casters just lost it and i remember like the team i think got in trouble for it because they didn't technically like play the game as intended yeah, yeah, yeah. but like but either way like it's still it made for such an amazing moment because it's just like how often do you get to see like pro play where they just race the map and say you know like ggs you know good luck wherever you go next i don't know it's just it was good sportsmanship in my opinion but i get where they're coming from Either way, port's down, uh, sentinel camps were grabbed for top and bottom, and I think now we just kind of get into some camp rotations, lane clearing, and uh, getting ready for our first objective phase that will be up at the three minute mark in our game. Yeah, that was, it, it was just the team's having fun, but it is it is cool to see like what happens if nothing is stopping mm -hmm. a push, right? Like how fast can a map really end? But you see here, both of these teams actually picking up their samurais, and they're just gonna let them push and die. So we are, out of stalemate in some cases uh there is a level lead out of the side of ralph's raiders um i think that kill maybe is what got them that level lead all that loss xp when vesper team died there in the bottom lane doing his best to swap up heavy actually taking a lot of damage there from the old tower aggro I gotta be careful of that uh, but they are gonna probably just trade tower for towers here we're we're, we're, we're just pawn for pawn um, at this point in the game. I would say the next big fight that probably breaks out is gonna be over one of the Samurais. Um, it's either that or our, our objective phase, because it is up, they could look to push with it. Um, Ruby was grabbed by the Decker King, they were holding that for quite some time, as uh, Chucky's just gonna kinda walk through, try and get over to Vesper, gets the power side to come through, Vesper's gonna be going down, the armor reduction was a little too much, as well as the damage from the Grey Main, and now, looks like this is gonna be Centurion, they need to get out of here, the slows will be there, that's gonna be a Condemn coming out from the Joan as well, base, base bump from the ETC as the power side gets them out of there as well, Carbon now trying to race his way back, Centurion will be getting picked off. Look at all that Ruby! Value on only, the ground. yeah, unfortunately, that, oh. unfortunately, like, no one's really able to pick it up. Like, nope. that's 304 health per single vial. Like, it's like there was like, like a lot of 16 people... potions there, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just like, I think a lot of people look at it and they're just like, oh, they're smaller potions, they're not as valuable. But, like, right now, between the Deckard Cane and uh, well, excuse me, the Deckard Cane regular potions and the Ruby potions, there's like a 30 HP difference between them. Like, Regular they're just smaller. For, they're smaller. That's yeah, it. That's literally it. 342 on the regular potion. It's like 3, 316 on the ruby. Like, come on. Kick ruby, everybody. It's <laughs> it's just busted. 10 second cooldown as well. Hello? Wait, it's a 10 second CD now? It's Yeah, yeah. They also reduced the CD to Ooh. 10 seconds. So you can cast almost every W? Pretty much. And I believe, can't you get cooldown reduction on your W as well? Like, yeah, can't you level, get the Roger Cube cooldown from uh, hitting enemy heroes? Yeah, I think it's a 7 talent. I know you get the, the, the or maybe it's a 20 talent actually, the gem talent. Or the, perfect the, the gem. Perfect gems. Yeah. That might be it. Because I know someone was talking about that. Oh, yeah, with sorry. perfect gems at 20, you can put Ruby on like a 3 second CD. Oh, huh, that's, that's smiles. That's smiles. Mm -hmm. There's just happy smiles in the chat. <laughs> Oh god, so right now we just have a bit of a stalemate as Chucky's sitting on one side of this and Tremor's on the other and we're seeing a good example of Contested and Here's the Storm. Oh, it's not really going to be going anywhere, but uh, Legacy trying to just still stand on the edge of this as we are going to be having first objective phase. Uh, our Tana's clearing out the Sentinel Camp and bottom lane. The Sentinel Camp on the right's going to be down for the next minute and 38 seconds. Ten talents here around the corner as well for both these teams, so I think they're going to wait for this to kind of get in the lane and maybe try and take a fight there, but we actually have Balamar stopping things oh. a little bit as Mason Blaze is going to be in initiating the fight right there. Balamar does manage to get away in their win walk form, and they still have the objective pushing in their favor. they got to make something happen here on the side of Bandit's Bruisers. Yeah, we'll see if a fight breaks out here. The Jonah just does a really good job of deflecting ETC and not allowing him to really aggressively slide. And you can see here Carbon actually at the top just beating out ETC, forcing the slide out. Uh, but Valmar falling to the Sylvanas. A good job there in the bottom from Best I think he actually hit a swap. Um, he might be able to connect a second one here. Looks like he's fishing for something. 
Oh, and it does land on a tiger. Is there any follow-up, though? He has an angle here, potentially. Legacy looking to cube off something. Maybe the seal... Oh, the cube does miss. I think that's going to be it. They are chasing down Tremor. He's falling very low. He does follow the Sylvanas. A nice swap again from Liam. Wow, he's on fire, actually. He's, he's hit, like, I want to say almost every swap he's tried this game. Uh, at least it feels that way. I'd, I'd say I'd say they they've made like impactful swaps. It hasn't just been that you know that flash, uh, flashy full lane swap where then just nothing happens. It's you've had some some at least good utility coming out from those. It's gonna be nine and a half to nine and a half as Valmar's trying to step up, getting that armor reduction. But ETC is gonna be able to spread some armor around with the party block from level one. We do have Artanis just managing bottom lane as this is gonna be ten talents here first for the members of Ralph's Raiders. They haven't gone this in, actually. They didn't score that yeah. there. I, I just realized that fight actually went in it's favor. Stalin, but yeah. now they're worried with the tens. They say, you know what? It's not worth it. Let's just go ahead and grab our camp. At least yeah. we know they're on that, pushing that up. So this is, I, I'd say this is a safe safe pickup for them, and they're just going to be getting damage onto the top fort, and they'll probably take a little bit onto their top lane keep front gate a little bit. I, I, it's eight shots. Now this, this might just take down the fort, and that's about it. Wow. Deckard Kane has Shroom Cray at level seven. I didn't know that. 30% damage reduction for four mm -hmm. seconds. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, Deckard's a really good hero. <laughs> people shouldn't sleep on him. The only thing he can't do is actually heal people. He can make drinks. Oh, he can, well, yeah, he's, he's, a, he he's makes a mixologist. Drinks. Yeah, he doesn't, he, <laughs> he makes the drinks. It's just, do people hog the drinks? Or yeah, do people just not drink them, you know? You can only uh, you can only do so much. He he, he does he, he is trying to tell a story. It looks like too. Uh, stay a while and listen at level ten on that heroic. Uh, pretty good little like disengage for that bloodlust, right? Um, just a way to shut it all down. You 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 hear the you hear the the wolf yell and then you just take you know you put them, oh, you give, go to you, sleep. You give bud. them a nice nap time and then they'll calm down. And then you can fight on when mm -hmm. you know when they're not being so aggro. So no, I, I I actually really really like that. It's kind of just a slowdown, but it also gives ETC a little bit of extra setup for a mosh pit. So if you get a massive stay a while, then there's no immediate interrupt coming mm -hmm. out from like a Joanna plus shield. If you get a mega which is stay actually while, the only stall, mind you. Mm -hmm. There's no other way to break a mosh pit. Does because Ring of Frost does have a no. He'll just keep dancing through no. the root. That's true. Oh, it's just a root. Sorry, excuse me. I yep. don't know why I thought it was a stun for a second. I thought it'd it was be like cool. A if, stun, if it was a stun, it'd be pretty busted, actually. And, uh, you're right on that. We don't want to give Jaina more no. busted abilities. She already just dumped shovels of snow on people's heads as they do continue to push into their bottom lane on the side of Bandit's Bridge. It's really good swap from Vesper to get onto Tremor and keep pushing into the enemy team. Looks like they're going to back off after getting the fort and just kind of get back into the lane. There's really nothing camp-wise. Actually, their Sentinel camp will be up in the next 30-some seconds. Yeah, they'll play for the eye pushing. here too, maybe. Yeah. Visions of, like camps on this map, it's a lot of a good of experience as well as just a lot of good information in the rotations as we actually see a fight breaking out. It's gonna be a swap coming out from our chance, but not managing to connect with that blessed shield from the Joanna. Huge condemnable in the net plus plus coming out as well. Rip Hyperion coming out from the Rainers. We also do have a mosh pit from the ETC. There's a stay wall in there as well. And actually the jo uh, the, the Jaina and the Savasha are gonna get traded out. Carbon and Oh my god, it's just an absolute bloodbath back and forth, but they end up finding four, five chuggies able to get out of there, I think. Imagine having two turrets and the two turrets are shooting their one turret. So it's like you it's like you don't have feels, them. Feels turret. <laughs> that, was actually, that was actually just depressing to watch, but I mean, a great team fight. We saw actually the Ring of Frost connecting, doing an absurd mm. amount of damage. There was no contestion for that mosh pit. It was able to hit Jaina and Rhaegar. Um, but the bloodlust on like those those two characters like Samro and Greymane is like oh, God, giving yeah. them free reign. While uh, the the ban like while the Bruisers did live for a really the Bandits Bruisers did live for a very long time, um, they just kind of got overcome by that that sustained damage. Right? Um, they don't really want fights to be as chaotic as that last one was. Maybe better stay a whiles. Uh, or or a potential, you know, the blind actually saved them there for a good amount of time. But, like, once all those things kind of fell away, they started to lose the fight. And I think that, you know, we were talking about Bloodlust in the draft. Uh, that level 20 Bloodlust, making it extend even longer, is going to be what is going to make these team fights at the very end. Um, even the AoE Mosh Pit, right? The Joanna Blood Shield. It's like, these are the things that I, I think will really be a problem. Uh, for the side of Bandit's Bruisers, but we'll see as we have a fight here, maybe breaking out over this objective. 
spot coming out from Artanis. Not going to be able to get the, uh, well, anyone moved around. There's going to be the blind, the bloodlust as well. Mason is split from the team. There's a bunch of uh, potions right behind them. Artanis is the first one to go down as the Gray Man is going to be diving in, going for the throat. And they now push this back with the Hyperion underneath them. And this is going to be Janna going down. She drops the ring across. It won't connect onto anyone. Carbon trying to turn around. Heavy looking to get out of here. Gets a good chain heal out to the friendly side. But I think the members of Bandit's Bruisers are actually going to continue to chase this. I was about to say they're going to go back for the objective, but okay, yeah. I was going to say, like, I was like, I was like, you, you, I don't think you're going to get a chase on that side of the map, but they managed just to force a decent fight in their favor, and they're going to get the objective here. Yeah, really good fight there. Even as you saw, you know, the Artanis may have played aggro and kind of grabbed all of the attention of the other team during that time that sylvanas and rainer had like a stack of ruby potions um that were just hanging out and getting to kind of damage freely a slide's going to connect on the valmar he is able to split into his clones probably look to swap to the back one there survives but you know half health with a Rhaegar support it's not the most uh, lovely thing as trimmer's gonna get swapped by liam doing a good job here there's no follow-up from the etc just use that slide uh, we'll see they'll probably just get to score few rockets towards the enemy's keep wall it looks like yep and uh i don't believe that that takes out the entire structure but it will get it weak yeah i think they'll get like the front gate and like a little damage if it goes to the well it'll probably take out the well. oh that's oh, true wow. wow i didn't even realize okay I didn't, well i thought it was a lot stronger than this oh okay all right that's just gonna keep front okay. gate going down <laughs> that's what we get when we win objectives Ugh. nowadays um yeah, we lose uh... we get a we get two towers and a and a wall Lovely. That's I, all I, that hard I, work, dude. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda wish that was a little, I was expecting that to be a little bit more so, but we do have a fight starting to break out over the Sentinel Camp Power Site from ETC. Moshpit's gonna be dropped underneath it. There's going to be the Bloodlust from the Rhaegar. No one is interrupting it because the only person who interrupted it was Mosh, but the Ring of Frost will come out, so it will be a one for one trade. Samuro for the ETC as the Blood Shield will come out. Carbon very low right now. Basically, trying to die for that backline. Banshee's gonna be coming out. They're actually gonna blink forward into this. Tiger's gonna use the Ice Block to buy a little time for themselves, but I think they should go down to the Sylvanas as the Sentinel Camp is going to be clear out by the members of bandits and losers, but i believe ralph's raiders were able to grab this away from them yeah that was a that was actually a great fight uh we actually we saw the samurai just get one shot actually um before he was able to do sort of the trickery uh, so the focus there from Bandit's Bruisers is, is very high. Uh, while the ETC does go down, you know, getting rid of one of those big sustained damage dealers like the Samuro, right? It kind of mm -hmm. locks up a lot of the chaos uh, from Ralph's uh, Raiders. So it, it, getting rid of that just kind of turns it into a 4v4 at that point, And that's really where Bandit's Bruisers want to be at. Uh, they want to be in that posture fight situation. Uh, able to pick it up, get their Samurai, get... Not where they able yeah, they got the other team samurai as well and a turret mm -hmm. camp. So they have a turret camp lead, um, as well, obviously, a team fight lead, uh, and the XP lead to level 20. Yeah, I'd say it's a pretty close game between these two teams nine to seven in kills. We're looking at roughly like a thousand between them when it comes to experience. It's really, really close, in my opinion, when it comes to who could potentially take this game. Uh, structure wise, I think we're about the same as well. It looks like we might have a, a little bit of damage on some front gates, but either way, Vesper's going to get a swap on to Valmar, who does manage to get a blink or uh, manages to go to a different clone as the Bless Shield comes out. There's going to be a condemned to follow up afterwards. The Ring of Frost is avoided by two, but they do have the Northern Exposure to get them to lock down for a second. Like is he taking a lot of damage? Carbon split from the team is going to try and go for the throat. That's Sylvanas and the Decker going down. The Great Mane went down as well. They find a Rainer killed. Moshpits dropped by Chucky, but that's just going to buy some time as they get picked off. And now Vesper is going to split from this fight, trying to play in the bush, but they end up going down. That's going to be a full team white on the side of the Grand Bandits Bruisers. And the members of Ralph's Raiders are going to go ahead and siege through this key front gate. Probably getting. I, I would assume they're going to get a keep here, right? Um, maybe not. The Samurai. I mean, the Samurai clones look like they get kind of eaten up by these turrets now. Tremor tanking here. Yeah, they're going to be able to pick up the keep. That's going to be about it. And you saw in that fight actually what happens when uh, Valmar kind of gets uh, the go ahead on the back line. Oh, this mm -hmm. is. It's risky. The, the core damage was buff recently, so we'll see. Yeah, well, this will be a good example of if the core is strong enough. Uh, it looks like it's going to go down here. Sylvanas is going to be up. Maybe no silence, but she can just throw her wailing. Oh, she's going to get blessed. She's not going to be able to get that second E off. Samurai is too healthy at this point. Yeah, that's Samurai on core. That's going to be game one over the side of Ralph's Raiders. GG. 
Well played. Yeah, really that, good. Really good team yeah, go fights. I was gonna say, like, mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, that that last team fight kind of went exactly how Ralph's Raiders wanted to go, um, and the fact that the Samuro was able to get to that backline right without contestion and without any kind of counter focus, right? Uh, the fight broke out in a way that he was hidden away, kind of, and. They were focused on, I think at the time, the Joanna and the Greymane. They actually ended up killing the Greymane. But all of that firepower, all of those CDs went into the Greymane, which allowed Samurai, uh, Samuro to just kind of slice up the back line um, and do a massive amount of damage, especially level 16 plus, right? Press the attack. Mm -hmm. It's like that's when he turns up and turns into the monster uh, that he becomes. So a really good team fight from them, I think. Uh, but always, honestly, I really like the comp out of the side of uh, Bandit's Bruisers.